And good morning, guys. We got Denise and Don here again together, and um, a lot's been happening out there in this crazy, crazy world when it comes to the ascension energies. Uh, waves have been coming in, and we've all been feeling them um, differently according to what your job is while you're here helping with this process and what you associate and resonate with. And um, a lot of us been feeling it different ways. Uh, a lot of us been uh, feeling a lot of heaviness, it's kind of a little bit of a downer. I know I had a couple bad weeks. I know you had a couple of, uh, you had a bad week too, didn't you, Don? Yes, I, I did. Yeah, and you know, we did both of us were talking yesterday about this and you know, we just got on a, a, a really good subject of, you know, especially the empaths, you know, maybe we'll get into uh, the, you know, the characteristics of empaths and indigos and light workers and, you know, how some of us are one or the other or a mix of all or a mix of two or, and the differences. And I think, you know, that causes a lot of, uh, what is it? Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Dissonance, uh, maybe, between all of us here because sometimes, like the light workers, will sometimes look at the empaths who are having a downer and say, Well, you need to raise your vibration. You need to raise your vibration. And, and I don't think it has to do anything with that. I think it you know, doesn't. No, you know, it, it, it's, it's just the job that we have taken on, especially the empaths, because we're i'm not saying we're better or worse we're just all different everybody's different right yeah that's and the vibration has nothing to do with it and when people say that it's i remember when i first started my journey and i heard all those people say this wouldn't be happening to you if your vibration was high enough and that wasn't true it was because it's my job to absorb negative energy and transmit it as I had nothing to do with my vibration, but it made me feel bad about myself for a long time because people said that until I figured out that I just attract the energy to transmute it. I felt bad because I felt like I had a low vibration when I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that was my, my problem too. And, and don't you think that there's a lot of empaths out there because of what the light workers are saying uh, a lot of empaths are afraid. A lot of the people are afraid to come forward and, and say, hey, I'm feeling bad. I need some support here. I need some help because they are afraid that they're going to be judged. And well, I know for myself, I was really afraid to say anything because I just thought, man, what's wrong with me? There's something wrong with me here, you know, because you know, we have our good days. We'll, we'll be doing really, really good and really high and energetic. And then all of a sudden, wham, something will go on in the world. And then what do we do? We start absorbing all of that negative energy to, like you said, to transmute it because that's what we do. We would rather take it in and transmute it transform it into something more positive than let it be out there and hang out there and constantly bother people. So, yeah, I think a lot of people, um, they're not, they, you know, they're just internalizing how they're feeling and not expressing it. And I think that's why this is such a good message in this video today about the empaths and their job. They're, you know, they're doing such a tough job and, and no, it's not that, you're not doing your work and, and you're not raising your vibration and, uh, you know. Right. And light workers know, I mean, real light workers know that that has nothing to do with that, your vibration because we are attacked severely during our journey. And so we know that it has nothing to do with vibration. It has to do with training for our jobs. Yeah. And, and, you have to learn to transmute this energy and there's a training period of learning how to do that. And there's, it doesn't matter how high your vibration is. You can't, it's going to happen. So the, the whole high vibration thing, it's, it's a myth. It's not true. Well, and, and don't you think though, um, we all, 
we all came here to liberate this planet. And if we, if everybody's so worried about raising their vibration and vibrating out of here, I mean, I hear a lot of shamanic people talk about this, you know, with, with the event stuff. And it's like, you know, we came here to heal the 3D earth before we can go up. And so many want to bypass that. I go, know. And then just go straight into 5D. But guess what? All their talk, they're still here. I know. <laughs> it's our job. To, it, no one's supposed to be left behind. I mean, we're, it's not just, you know, a few people on Earth is, are supposed to go to the new Earth. It's, the goal is everybody, right. you know, and we got to wait for people to catch up. You know, just because we went through it first doesn't mean that we leave people behind and just go on, you know. I mean, we have to help everybody, and everybody has a chance. Yeah. We just had our chance first. Right. You know? Yeah, I know. You can, you've, been, <laughs> you've been keeping track of the numbers a little bit, haven't you, as far as the percentage of – you know, who's in 3D, who's in 4D, who's in 5D? Yeah, it was 45. Well, a couple of weeks. Well, another wave came through yesterday. I felt it. Um, and my heart started beating really fast. It lasts a couple hours. Um, so, yeah. And then I also saw Greg Prescott post that he thought another wave came through. Someone had said it did. And so I checked. And sure enough, yeah, another wave had come through. And... Um, before this wave, uh, we were at 45% people were in 5D, but most of those people are just beginning 5D, yeah. you know, and there are levels in that dimension that you have to work up. So, yeah. you know, doesn't mean that, you know, everything's all better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you yeah. still got work to do. Um, and then um, everybody, so it was 45% were in 5D. And no, everybody else was left in 4D, um, but some people chose to drop back down to 3D. So we're at 5% back in 3D, 55% are in 5D. So Wow, we're at the tipping point now, you know. But yeah, you know. So that, that leaves 35% in 4D. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I spent enough time in 4D. <laughs> But, you know, and it's like, it's interesting because, you know, the last two weeks, it was just like one more, I was just really working hard. You know, the, the uh, transmissions were coming through like crazy. I was getting all this information. And, and then it was like, these people started uh, attacking uh, my videos. And when they did that, it was just sent me down. And then I started absorbing all of their crazy energies because there was so much going on in the world at the time. And so well, the people and people in 3d and even some people in 4d, because a lot of people are new to 4d. So they are not, have, they are not handling this energy well at all. No. I've had a few people that have uh, been rather hostile towards me. And um, people I've even known a long time. And uh, when someone acts like that, I just check. Um, and usually they have negative energy on them. So it's really not the person that's reacting to me. It's the energy reacting to my energy. Mm -hmm. So you kind of got not take it personal. Because it, really when you're in that condition, because it's happened to me, you can't really control yourself, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And you don't and you know what you're saying isn't right and you know what you're doing isn't right but you yeah. can't stop. Yeah. Yeah. And cuz it you know it's, you're just overtaken and then once the energy is removed you won't go back to normal and you're like oh why did I act like that? Yeah. That's terrible, you know, but yeah. It, it's just the in negative energy reacting to your light energy. You know, and I think it's a time too for here's another term, indigos. Because I think both you and I are indigos, too. And like we said before, a lot of these meld together. Um, a lot of us can be all of these. And, you know, some of us are just maybe one of these. But a lot of us are all, all, all of these. And I just think it's time for the indigos to rejoice. Because this is why they came here, to bust the system. And we're seeing the system crumbling. I mean, 
you know, look at Bill Cosby. I know. Holy cow. I know. It's, it's actually happening. I mean, karma, you know, because of the way we're in Saturn retrograde, Pluto retrograde, and we're about to have a big Scorpio full moon in a couple of days. Yeah. Um, all that has to do with endings, destruction and new beginnings and, uh, karma, um, with, uh, Saturn is the Lord of karma when it's direct, when it's in retrograde, that's double dose of karma and no one can hide from karma energy. Um, I wrote a blog about it yesterday explaining, you know, what each retrograde meant in the full moon. And, um, someone, uh, public, someone made a video of my article and put it on YouTube and I read the comments and people were like, well, you know, why would you write this and tell us how not to protect ourselves? You can't protect yourself from this energy. It's karma energy. Mm -hmm. and, and you yeah. know, you, yeah. there's nothing you can do. You can't shield from this. You can't protect yourself. It's, it reached, it's reaching everyone on earth. I mean, it is. Yeah. There's nothing you can do. If anyone can figure out how to stop, you know, the full moon energy, I'd like to know because I act crazy when there's a full moon. So if anyone can figure that out, let me know. <laughs> I know. Well, even there, and I've heard this years ago that the, the dark side knew these energies were coming in and they, they did not want this. They did not want these energies to hit them. So, you know, they were building all these expensive underground palaces thinking that they could protect themselves from this. And I, you know, it's just ridiculous when you think about that. And, and yeah, you can't escape karma energy. I mean, no. there is no way it, it, you know, karma will find you. It doesn't matter where you go. Yeah. <laughs> you and know? I think, I think for them, the most part is they're not worried about evolving or ascending. They're worried about going back to the central sun. You know, yeah. we've been seeing already, a lot of them have already been doing that. So, you know, they had a choice and, uh, you know, but it is, it's interesting. I hear more and more people, more and more people just uh, c coming up with these all of a sudden cancer, just, one minute they're fun and the next day they have cancer and then two weeks later they're gone. I know. It's crazy. It is. It is. Um, you, you know, uh, people just aren't going to make the shift. No, 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 no. And I, you know, and I think that it's easier that if these people choose to move on and, you know, they'll just start, they'll start again in an, another planet, much like 3d earth and, but I, I, it's easier for us. And, you know, and, I, and, and, you know, you, we were talking about the people that are, you know, these energies, you know, we had talked about this before, about everybody thinking they want this big bang to happen right away. It's like, bang, we're all there, but it can't because so many of us are at different levels and so right. many of us are just coming into it. And I think that it needs to be a gradual. It has to be gradual. I I know my body went through a lot of changes from 3D to 4D. Um, my brain was rewired in 4D. Um, I had a lot of other changes. And that has to happen for you to be able to handle 5D. Mm -hmm. And, you know, your body goes, and then once you get 5D, hit 5D, you're going to start getting your light body and Kundalini energy. And your body has to be changed internally to be able to handle that energy. Yeah. If we just had people, you know, in 3D all of a sudden go to 5D, they wouldn't survive. Their body can't handle that energy. Yeah. 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 So it is. It's, you know, it, it, I, it, we can't hurry this. And, I, and it, it's really not <clears throat> fair to hurry this. And I know a lot of us are really tired. We've been doing this before and, and, you know, and a lot, and I even said that it's like, I'm retiring when this is done. I just can't do it again. But you know, it's like having children. It's like when you're in transition with birth, it's like, I'm never doing this again. And then a year later, you're pregnant again. <laughs> <laughs> you forget the pain and suffering. Right. Right. <laughs> And, you know, and then, you know, traversing from 3D to 5G, you know, it is, it's like giving birth. It is rebirth. So, 
I mean, we came here to save the earth and the ever and the people on earth. We didn't come here to just save a handful of people or a few people and then take off and leave everybody else. I mean, this is a group effort for everybody. Yeah, it is. And we have to wait on people to catch up. Yeah. Yeah. As hard as it may be uh, to swallow, uh, you know, um, um, but I think, um, you know, the ones that uh, are saying absolutely not, we're already seeing them go and seeing the changes and, you know, a lot of the disasters, some of them have gone in the disasters and, um, right. you know, and, and who are we to say how people are choosing to go or what they're what their choice is, you know, and, but as empaths and light workers, you know, we just take everything to heart. I mean, it is painful for us when we see all this and we want everybody to, to come on over with us. But, uh, yeah, it's, um, it's like the, the warriors, you know, leave no man behind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the whole point. We're trying not to leave people behind. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so, uh, but yeah, I mean, I've been in 4d for, for like four, I mean, 5d for four years. Yeah. I'm, I want it to come too, but I, you know, it has to be for everybody, not just me. Yeah. Well, I've noticed that there hasn't been too many, I haven't seen any chemtrails. So I find that very interesting. The beginning of the month, we were heavily hit with chemtrails, but now all of a sudden I haven't seen any chemtrails. So I find that very interesting. I didn't even notice chemtrails till the middle of March. And that's when I saw the pink clouds and stuff. Yeah. And then right after I saw the pink cloud that I saw, which was in the, like at three o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> and it was like a bright magenta pink cloud, just one cloud. And it was right over my car and I watched it for like 10 minutes. So I know I didn't imagine it, but right after that, they started spraying really bad and I've never seen chemtrails here before. Yeah. But it seems like the last few days they've eased up. I haven't, I'm not noticing them anymore. We actually have sunshine again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it, it's nice to see a real blue sky. It is nice to see. And plus yeah. I think when they do the chemtrails, it, it, mother nature reacts with some violent weather. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Because we've had tornadoes. We've had um, nonstop rain for days. And I think that's Mother Nature's way of clearing the chemtrails. Yeah, we've, um, we've had a lot of high winds. We get a lot of high winds at this time of the year, but everybody just seems to think that it's just worse. And, and it does seem to coincide with the chemtrails i know when they spray us and then those clouds start to form and the winds come and then we have the winds for a couple of days and um i know because i'm up in the mountains we have the scalar that comes out of the mountains which really helps disperse um you can see the scalar actually dispersing the chemtrails but um it just seems like it's it seems like gaia is really amping up it's like we've made the decision and we've come to the point where, okay, we're ready to do this. And she's like, she's gotten the, the green light to go. So it's yeah. like really amped up uh, what she's doing. So, I mean, she's the one that's going and we're going with her. So did I wake you up? I'm sorry. Go back. Just, to just since uh, Saturn retrograde began in the, in the beginning of this month, We've seen a lot of people get caught. I mean, the Golden State Killer got caught oh, after yeah. 40 years on the run. Bill Cosby got found guilty. Yes. I saw um, a cult leader uh, go to jail. He has no bond. He's been abusing women. Yes. I used to think money is what ran this world, but I'm beginning to change my mind and think it's sex with all this stuff coming yeah. out. I think it seems like all these people are getting in trouble for all these sexual assaults and sexual harassment. And well, I think it, it, it stems from um, the cycle of us when the planet, the original uh, planet, before we got hijacked, we were, they say we were matriarchal, but actually we were 
equalitarian, we were in balance. And then patriarchal overthrew that. And I think that's where the suppression of women, you know, it's all about suppressing women and degrading women because the women are the ones that carry all that extra knowledge and the nurturing and the loving. And, you know, we're not about sending our boys into war. We're not about bloodletting and all of that. And mm -hmm. so I think it, you know, and we've been talking about this. I mean, the return of the goddess and the return of the, the divine feminine. We've been talking about this for years. And I think we're finally seeing it happen with these bad sexual salters and the sex rings and all that. They're all starting to crumble now. Oh, so. they, I know they are. I mean, there uh, was a lot of men in high positions that were doing bad things sexually to people, women and children, and they're all being, they're being caught now. Yeah. And this yeah. went on for a long time. So Saturn in retrograde is doing its job. Yeah, I think so. I think so. You know, so mm -hmm. it, it, interesting times. It, it, it really is. It's, uh, it's kind of exciting. And well, I know it is exciting because for so long we watched good people suffer mm -hmm. and good, you know, at the hands of other people. And now we're actually seeing the tides turn and the bad people are getting what was coming to them all along. And uh, it's nice to see because for so long, everybody just got away with anything. Yeah. 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 And, you know, even the, our, some of a lot of our government officials, they all of a sudden, a lot of them have waken like overnight, they've waken up. And that's why we've gotten so many whistleblowers because they're, they finally woke up and they finally came over to this side and they finally said, I can't, if I die, I just can't see this. I can't let this happen anymore. This has to come out. And mm -hmm. uh, so we know a lot of them have died. <laughs> I mean, the Clintons, they got quite a very huge. Uh, yeah, I don't never want to meet those people. <laughs> no. When you are friends with them, bad things happen to you. Yes. And the Bushes, I mean. Oh, yeah, they're just as bad. Yeah, Barbara's going, and I was kind of thinking, well, here goes the old man Bush, you know, but no, he decided to stick around a little bit longer. <laughs> so I don't know why, but. <laughs> so. But it is, we're seeing it. And, um, you know, so, you know, and, 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 and it's like, okay, we had said this before. It's like, finally, we are seeing the fruits of our labor. And finally, we're actually able to do our job. Yeah, finally. Yeah. So a lot of people are the ones that are starting to wake up. They need, they need to find people like us. Because for us, it's like, oh, yeah, we've known this for a long time, you know. And I think that's why some of the energies, I, it was like, you know, that indigo thing, we just have this real strong knowing and you just get this really like, you, you can't argue with an indigo when they just know something. Oh, yeah. No, when you know, when I know I'm right, there is no way you can change my mind. Yeah, yeah. So, um, um, but it's like, it's time now for us to share, you know, share what we know with others. And, but that confusion, you know, I went through, I had the strong knowing and then I had the week where I was just like, everything in my head was scrambled. I was so confused. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like I didn't believe anything it's like I don't believe that I don't and even in my old beliefs I don't believe that I can't believe that you know there's just too much there's and then I it's just that the empath was picking up on the confusion of the collective because oh yeah it's know? gonna be yeah this I feel better I started feeling better after that wave came through yesterday afternoon it always these waves always come through in the afternoon um, in my time zone. I started to feel immediately better. Like all that collective conscious energy lifted. But the last two weeks, the collective conscious energy has been really rough. And the, 
I know it's the collective conscious energy because I'll check my, I'll see if I'm grounded. I'll check my chakras. I'll check, you know, my aura. If I'm in good spiritual condition, this isn't my energy. You yeah. know, it's, yeah. it's coming from somewhere else. Yeah. Well, and I'm glad you checked me yesterday. <laughs> like I'm going crazy yeah <laughs> yeah and that's the thing you know we always I always feel like oh it you know am I be, is it, I'm being a negative person oh my gosh am I being a negative person I don't want to be a negative person you know I know and that but it's not your negativity you're just picking it up you know but it sometimes it's hard to to tell where it's coming from and even more so I mean <laughs> it's like we had the calm before the storm and it's like now the storm hit and we are just, you know, everybody, you know, and I feel sorry for people who are, uh, some of joining these Facebook groups and they're like, I am just like, I have no energy and, and I'm feeling so sad and I'm so depressed and, you know, and then they're getting wrong information from other people, you know, back to that, vibration thing and you know and, and and i made a meme yesterday because i started thinking about that because i had a, a interaction with someone who did that to me and all i was trying to do was help the empaths who were uh, taking in all these energies and just telling them that hey you know uh, we need to take a break now and then and we need to just get rid of these energies it's not our own energies it's a collective <laughs> and uh so when this this person uh, said, oh, you know, no, 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 you need, you, you got to work on your vibration. And once you raise your vibration, you'll never see that again. And you'll always be in this high vibration. So I did a, a meme and I found a mermaid in the water and it was, and I wrote telling someone, uh, uh, you can't help someone who's drowning by standing on the shoreline and telling them they don't know how to swim. I know <laughs> those, those people that say that high vibration, we call those fluffy bunnies. <laughs> They're so busy trying to avoid everything negative and stay positive, And that's not realistic. No. There is negativity in this world and there's a lot of negativity in the collective conscious right now. Cause so many people are going through the dark night of the soul right now. And all that energy pours into the collective consciousness and sensitive people and empaths pick it up. Yeah. You yeah. just got, once the, an empath or sensitive person learns how to transmute that energy, you know, yeah. they'll, you know, that'll be great. But, you know, that's a learning process and not everybody is in the same place. Not everybody has the same job and, you know, yeah. Yeah. Being a fluffy Bonnie doesn't help anybody, not even yourself, because oh, that negativity you've been ignoring will catch up to you. Yeah. And because you haven't been processing it, it's going to be a big pile of negativity you're going to have to deal with. Yeah. Yeah. And it is. It's so true. You know, it's for the empaths and those who are just waking up. No, it is not. And I say this all the time. It's not unicorns farting rainbows. No, it's not. You this know? is hard work, the hardest work you'll ever do in your life. Yeah. But it's worth it. It is. It, it is. really is. It is worth it. It's blood, sweat, and tears, but it all is worth it, and it yeah. gets better. Yeah. It may not seem like it does, but it does. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, the for the people that are out there are waking up or, or those who've been on this path for a long time and can't figure out why they do all this work, they're doing what they're doing doing that everybody's telling them do this do that do this and then the next day they wake up and they're down in the dumps and it's like this is why you're just doing your job mm -hmm. this is what you signed up for and right um, yeah yeah when you go in when you go into 5d well 4d and 5d so our mission on earth is divided into two parts the first part of your mission is healing yourself. Then the second part is going out and telling others how you healed yourself so that others can resonate and you can help them heal too. Not everybody's going to resonate with your message because you might have different jobs. So yeah. not everything that works for you is going to work for everybody, but it will work for that part of soul group that you belong to. 
So right now, if you're in, you're just beginning, if you're in 4D, you're just beginning 5D, your only job is to heal yourself. That is your mission. Mm -hmm. That's all you, you need to concentrate on. Yeah. Oh yeah. I remember when I was doing that back in, um, it was just, it was fought, let's see, 2003. I had this vision that I needed to leave the Denver metro area and go up into the mountains. It was this vision and I was sitting around um, with this large gathering of elders and they were telling me, you have five years to get up into the mountains. You need to go up there. You need to heal yourself because you can't do your job until you heal yourself and that job is going to be happening. And boy, I tell you what, we, we did, I did it. I told my husband and he, he listened to me, you know, but the thought, the fifth year was 2008 when the economy just went and we had just bought land up, up in the mountains here and we just made it in the nick of time. So that's what I did is I was in the 4D. I mean, I just healing, healing. And I couldn't have anybody around me. I, I just was like a, a hermit up there on my mountain. Mm -hmm. that, that's when I finished my first book. And so now it's like, aha, the mission is finally coming out. And it's like, okay, you know. And so, yeah, yeah, it's interesting the stages we all have to go through. Right. Because I have a lot of people ask me what their mission is. And, and really, your mission is to heal yourself. And that's if you concentrate on that as much yeah. as you can. Yeah. And then after you're done with yourself, you'll go out and share your experiences and help others. And that is, that is the whole process. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, for us, you know, we have to remember that we signed up for this journey. We signed up for this experience. And for so many people who want to rush this, um, who have just, you know, they maybe woke up in 2008 when the la we had the last crash and they're ready to just bypass all of this learning that, you know, that they can compile. And, you know, it's, it's kind of like when you go to, when you go to a workshop or any kind of schooling, the first, they first teach it to you, so you learn the mind part of it, and but you have to experience it to actually integrate it. And if we were to bypass that integration, and then we went to the other side, and then we thought, oh, look at all, look at everything I missed, I passed up. I know. I'm so mad at myself, you know. So, uh, yeah, we have to, we have to really, um, I guess, try to enjoy the journey, even though it's tough at times. <laughs> it is tough. But, you know, 2016, I don't know what was going on. I think that we, we were having a lot of super moons then. Um, there was um, that Gaia TV that it was a guy to the guy am the guy who has guy am YouTube. He was talking about these big, he was talking about the event. Then the event was supposed to happen then. And, um, I think it was 2000, it was either 2015, but 2016 was really rough for me too. I don't know what I was going through. I, I know what it was. I was integrating back into society because I'm, I left my mountain retreat and I'm back into society. So I'm, I had to learn how to deal with that and all the people. That's when I went back into society too, was 2016. I stayed without a job for like a year and just isolated myself. And cause I was going through way too much to even be out in the public, you yeah. know, as, working and stuff yeah and then i think it was early 2016 when i went back out into society and got a job and was around more 3d people and stuff yeah. before that i couldn't i just for a year i had to take a break from yeah. uh yeah yeah and i even contracted shingles and i had i dealt with that for over a year it was terrible it was terrible 
I I know someone that had shingles and he was in a lot of pain. Oh, and, you know, when they say it's painful, uh, the, the, I mean, it's like a hundred times worse. I, you can't even imagine. I mean, it literally was like someone had an ice pick and they were constantly <laughs> stabbing me in the shoulder. <laughs> oh, and that's today, terrible. Yeah, and today I still have, I can feel when I'm stressing, it's like I'll get that back there, that nerve damage, because, you know, it's in your spine. So um, I just think it had, for some reason, there was some kind of a kundalini something going on. And when it was going on, it just pushed that out of me. And I had to get rid of it. But it it took quite a while for me to get over that. And that, you know, there I was like, I work on myself so much and I do all this and I'm a vegetarian and I don't drink and I don't smoke. I don't do none of that. And I get the shingles. <laughs> well, yeah, I think that's toxins probably leaving your body. I mean, <clears throat> I had a lot of rashes throughout 2016 too. Yeah. And uh, early 2017, I was like everything I ate uh, or every bug that bit me would cause an allergic reaction. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would have rashes from the allergic reaction. And yeah, yeah, it was rough. Well, I, I think our body, you know, we're going through such a change where you're going into a, a crystalline body, you know, and I like what el um, the shamanic, that shamanic healer, Elf, uh, oh gosh, what is his name? Villoto, Alfonso Villoto. Anyways, he wrote, um, three really cool books and he said that we are becoming homo luminous so um i think but you know what here's here's a good sign for the people who are waking up now for us when we woke up i mean i started back in the early 90s the late 80s you know i started and it, I just went through a lot. It was just like, I'm going crazy just for a long time. And a lot of this painful stuff. And I think now the people are waking up now. It's not going to be drawn out for so long for them. No. And plus they have um, higher dimensional people to help them. I really didn't have any help. I went no. through this alone. But now they have people that have already been through it that can help, help yeah. them. You know, and I, I remember when I was first waking up. Um, you know, I started out major church goer, um, because I was looking for an answer, you know, but I wasn't getting the answers in church. But I remember, I they had me so programmed about the demons and devils. And while I was going to church, I would just have these horrible, horrible nightmares. And they were people killing, running after me, wanting to kill me and killing everybody around me. And, um, and as soon as I decided I stopped going to church and I started my Reiki training, the night before my first Reiki class, I dreamt that the night the, the Grim Reaper was after me. Mm -hmm. And I and I remember battling him and I and I and I, and I remember biting his bony hand. <laughs> and I was just like, no, nope, you're not taking me. And it was just like I had reclaimed my power. And I hit the ground running ever since, and I don't have any more nightmares. I used to have nightmares about mice, because I've always been afraid of mice. Not snakes or anything like that, just mice. And I would dream about mice. And I would catch the mouse and let it go, and you know, just different dreams. And then one day, because I was so terrified of mice, and you know, um, one day our cat was, caught a mouse in my room and brought it in my room and was just batting around playing with it, you know, <laughs> but it scared the mouse. So the mouse like laid there and pretended to be dead. And I'm terrified of mice, but I had to overcome that and go pick the mouse up and take it outside, even though it terrified <laughs> me to do that. And it really wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. I took the mouse out and let him go and he ran off. And after that, no more mice dreams. So I think that you conquer your fear and then you, you know you you're done with that oh yeah 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 because i remember <laughs> i remember before that we had gone to estes park 
And um, I was I was starting to, you know, branch out of my box a little bit, peek my head out of the box. And then I remember there was a store that was really cool and 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 it, it attracted me. I walked into the store and it was all this new agey stuff. And you know, it was beautiful stuff. And I was just stopped and I was like, oh, I'm not supposed to be in here. I'm a Christian, you know. And so I left that store. And uh, but after I had that dream and conquered that fear, that's the first thing I did was go into one of those stores and I signed up for, for a Reiki class and I called the person who was giving this class and it was just like I could feel myself. I was sweating and and I was thinking, this is not like me. This is normally not like me to do this, you know, but uh, it was just, it's, you know, it was, you know, I just got out of my box and I hit the ground running. So, you know, a lot of people, um, a lot of people are going to find that they're going to be doing the same thing. And I think even the people who are listening today, they're going to think back and go, oh, yeah, that's right. I went through something like that. So. When, you're ra when you're raised in a religion from a young age, it's really hard to uh, get past the being put in your head at a young age. Yeah. And um, even at like six or seven, when I was, I had to go to church three days a week. I knew I was surrounded by some really terrible people when I was there. I knew what I was being told wasn't right. Uh -huh. But when you're the only person in a group of people, and especially as a child, you know, feeling different than everybody else yeah. and yeah. knowing that what's going on around you is not right. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the worst, well, most, some of the worst people I ever met were, was in church. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're oh, yeah. terrible. It was terrible. Yeah. Terrible our, people. Our worst experiences with people, just business experience where people, as soon as they said that, oh, I'm a Christian. <laughs> yeah. Our, our red flags would go up. Oh yeah. And those were the people that gave us the hardest time. Cause they, I think they think that, that they have like a, a, like a blank check to do whatever yes. they want to people yes. and they can act however they want because God forgives them. Yeah. But that's not how it works. And then everybody's really soon is about to find that out. They are. It's about what's in your soul. It's about karma and you can't go around treating people terribly and just expect it all to be forgiven. It yeah. doesn't work like that. You have to work that karma off by doing good deeds. And if you're just going to walk around being terrible to people, you're going to have terrible karma. And it's well, you know, <laughs> listening to, uh, I just, you know, synchronicity is like, you know, I find these people to listen to. It's like when the student is ready, the teacher will come and, you know, John Lash. And I think I sent something to you about him. He is that Gnostic teacher, and I didn't know anything about the Gnostics, and, you know, I found out it's not a religion, which, you know, I thought that was pretty cool, but he really studied the Nag Hammadi texts, and that's where he got a lot of his information, and, um, you know, he talks about the three major religions and how it was a virus that was actually inserted into to humanity to keep them um, under control and, uh, you know, so it totally makes sense why these people act the way they do because it is a false, it, it's all false. And, and I think the indigos, you know, when you and I came in, we, we could see through it right away. Right. I saw through it um, when I was five years old. Yeah. I, I, I knew when I was five years old, I could pick up on people's energy when I was that young. But, um, I, you know, of course, after a while, I shut all that off to f try and yes. fit in to my family and everybody else. But um, when I was young, I, I, had, I had a few abilities. I astral traveled and had lucid dreams and could feel people's energy. Yeah. But it all got shut off, you know. I think probably when I started school, I would say. Yeah. 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 When I, yeah. yeah I, uh, I was really connected with the earth and with animals when I was young. 
And I always thought that I was going to grow up and be a vet veterinarian. But when I got into high school, um, and I always, we had raised horses when I was in high school, and I was always really connected with the horse, but I was connected, like you said, I, I was got into the program and got into the matrix, and I was connected to them all in the wrong way. And I didn't become a veterinarian because I didn't want to deal with blood, and I didn't think that was the way I was supposed to help. And then once I started really waking up, I realized that I could help energetically. And, and, I, and then I realized my connection to the planet and the animals, and it was not that 3D connection anymore. You know? So. Yeah. Well, I think religion is a lot of, most, a lot of people, they're followers. And it's easier yeah. to follow a crowd than to stand up and be yourself. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I just think religion is a lot of followers. They follow their parent, what their parents believe. They follow what their grandparents believe. It's really difficult to be in a family and to be different. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. easier just to shut down and follow everybody. Yeah. Yeah. So I think yeah. that is a big reason why um, religion is uh, followers. Yeah. taking the easy way out it is it is and mm -hmm. um you know being on this journey being on the path that you and i are we hear it all the time every one of us say the same thing i don't have a lot of friends i feel like i'm the only one you know and so that's yeah. what it makes it hard and i think um, you know, even here, you know, when I integrated back into society, you know, I'm, I'm into horses big time, but I don't ride. It's very hard for me to get on the back of a horse now and control him like I used to when I was still in the 3D world. It was all about control. Now it's, I'm learning what's the true being beneath that horse suit. And a lot of the women in this area, they still exploit the horse and I just can't get into that. And I tell you what, I don't even have to open up my mouth. All I have to do is show up to one of their functions. And it's like, they all look at me like I have three heads. Yeah. And I, I, I don't I had, never I had to, didn't even have to say a word, but it's almost like I go in there and I try, I have to try doubly hard to get in. And I, and I'm, I can see myself working really extra hard to be accepted and the harder I work the less it works for me so I think there's just a lot of people right now that feel like that and um I was talking to a friend uh Jason 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 I know you're watching this um he said the same thing and he said but he says they're waking up so are they are waking up, but it doesn't mean they're good people yet. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that that takes work. I wasn't a very good person before I woke up. I had to I changed myself. Yeah. I was very, very 3D. I was very 3D. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think you can talk to all of us and um I mean I was very 3D too, you know. I mean I grew up where I grew up, you know, I'm so connected to animals, but where I grew up, way out in the country, you didn't want a dog anymore. This is back in the 70s and the 60s. You didn't want a dog anymore. You took it down a road and you kicked it out of your car and you left it. Or the, the, the lucky ones, well, maybe not so lucky, you took them out in your back 40 and you shot them. You know, and I grew up and that was like, that was okay. Or you tied your dog to a tree in the backyard and you'd be 30 degrees outside and he'd freeze, freeze to death. But that was okay. And, you know, I had, that was part of my dark night of the soul. I had to go back through that. And, you know, and for a long time, it really bothered me because, you know, it's like, because I thought it was acceptable. I was a bad person. I beat myself up over it. And here I am today, you know, healing horses with cancer and bringing in strays and rescuing animals. And um, until I was able to go back 
to all of those past dark memories and deal with it and change it. You know, it, it was just, it was following me around and it was just really hard. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I totally get what you're saying. You know, um, I wasn't a bad person. I just did what I needed to do to fit in with the majority, you know, party time and go out and drink and, you know, but I wasn't a bad person. Like in school, I didn't like people to pick on the underdogs. Right. I didn't like that either. No, did not like that. And, no. and I still don't like that. I, I'm very into justice and everything being fair. And, um, yeah, I'm not at all into, uh, that, uh, picking on people or, or any of that. And I see, I mean, even adults do it now. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. yeah. So, um, but yeah, so, you know, there, I think a lot of that is you have to, we call that the dark side. And, and I think that's where a lot of the light workers, and I'm saying, uh, I'm not saying this is bad or anything. I see some people that associate with themselves as a light worker, they want to bypass. They don't want to go into that darkness. And I think we have to go into our darkness. We, we, we call that shadow work. We have to do our shadow work. <laughs> light workers in no way, shape or form can avoid the dark. I mean, and Jessica, I think there's a lot of people that think they're a light worker that aren't because yeah. a light worker's journey for years is all that negativity and darkness yeah. because you have to learn how to deal with that to transmute it. You have to learn how, um, you can't avoid it. Yeah. So it's a very, very, very rough journey yeah. to take. Yeah. And I, a lot of times was like, why did you pick this? Yeah. Um, you know, this is so hard but it gets a lot better. Yeah. I mean, I would go months without feeling good energy. I was constantly attacked constantly. Yeah. And that was training. So I learned how to deal with the negative energy and use it later to help people. But at, when you're going through it, you don't know that, yeah. you know? Yeah. You don't know that this is training. Yeah. You know? tests we're always being tests and i i think i said it before it's like the shamans call it you you need to die the little deaths yeah because you're recreating a better you every time you you know it's it's like i posted that um the wounded warrior um post i think on your group and you know, it's, it's, it's all about going in and every time something happens to you that wounds you, how are you going to deal with that? And if you learn how to work through that, you come out stronger each and every time. But a lot of us tend to want to push that and, and push that and, and bury it and bury it and lock it in the closet. And then it just festers and it comes out anyway, you know? And uh, it's kind of like family curses. Um, I mean, things that happen in my family. You know, one family member will, um, my oldest daughter was raped by my um, half-sister's husband. And my grandmother and my mother wanted us to just bury it under the carpet. That's how women were. Yeah, yeah. They, they let men get away with this stuff. And that's why we have such a hard problem with it now. Yeah. And it is. It's all that. They were more worried about ruining the man's life. Yes. Yes. I don't but think it's worth him. I don't think it's worth him going to jail. Oh, I, he, I, that was just a one-time thing. Yeah. You know, why ruin his life yeah. over it? They Even were more concerned about the sexual yeah. abuser than the victim. Yeah. And even though he had gone to jail for 10 other different things, you know, um, and she eventually, my half sister eventually did divorce the guy, but uh, it just destroyed the whole family. And, and, you know, I lost a lot of respect for my grandmother and my mother mm -hmm. because I came here to bust that up. 
I could not comprehend that. Right. You like know. my grandma let a lot of abuse go on and now I have nothing to do with her because of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't speak to her or see her or have anything to do with her because she let a lot of abuse go on. Yeah. And did nothing about it. Yeah. And, uh, I guess I just don't want to be around that type of person. Yeah. You know, a lot of children suffered protecting one person. Oh Yeah. And there, those children spent their lives trying to get over it to protect one person, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just, so I, there's a lot of people I I don't speak to in my family because they covered up abuse and let abusers go. So. Yep. Oh yeah. Yeah. And you know, I myself had, when, when I was in school, I dealt with a lot of abuse and, um, it was hard for me. I didn't tell anybody anything. You just have, it's like, it's like, okay, because you don't know any differently. You think this is how it is. Right. You don't know any. Yeah, yeah. you're right. You don't, until you, so, you know, you're around other people that don't live like that. You just think that's life. Yep. Yeah. And now it's changing. And I think it is. It's like, I think, I attribute a lot of the changes that are happening in this world because of this return to balance. You know, it's now not acceptable. Women are speaking up and, you know, I don't mean a woman is going to go out and become a warrior and just start kicking the crap out of everybody. You know, I'm, I'm talking out, we're coming back into balance and we're standing up and we're saying, no, you can't do this to me anymore. I'm a sovereign being. We talk about humanity being sovereign. Women need to stand up and say, I'm a sovereign being. <laughs> and plus a, a lot of, a lot of people that have protected abusers and helped them get away with what they were doing are getting in trouble too now. Yeah. So yeah. that kind of helps, you yeah. know, that people are seeing maybe I shouldn't, not speak up because I can get in trouble too. I'm a uh, complicit to this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, and that's what we, you know, is like when, when my daughter came to me with her news, I was just like, oh. I mean, everything, all, all these scenarios flashed in my head about what, what should I do? And it's like, and I remember hearing, you know, you always have to believe the children. You always have to believe the children. And, and I, so, um, even though I knew it was going to really rip the family apart, I had to stand on her side and, you know, a lot of women, well, your grandmother just didn't do that. And so, you know, I think that's why there's so much change. We're coming in now and we're shedding the light on that darkness we're opening the door to that closet. We're taking the carpet and flipping it upside down. <laughs> so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lots of changes. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it's good to see. Um, that's the only reason I watch the news now is to see if some of these people get convicted. <laughs> <laughs> I think after Bill Cosby got convicted, there's going to be a lot more conviction. I think so. You know, and I think so. And um, somebody asked, somebody was talking to the attorney for the women and somebody said, so we, you know, what did you, what did you learn from this? She said, well, because she said, I learned that it takes more than one woman to come forward for something to happen. It took six women to come forward. And, you know, with the Me Too movement, more and more women are coming forward and, and, you know, and it's true, but I just have to say the, um, the light worker in me, um, I do look at Bill Cosby and I do feel sorry for him. Oh, I don't at all. Oh, you don't? <laughs> no, not a one bit. He got away with this over years. There he was did a, for a long time. Over yeah. 60 women came forward. Think of the ones that didn't come forward. Yeah. That, that's a large amount of, that's just 60 are the women that came forward and spoke out. Yeah. You know, there's more that didn't come forward. Yeah. I don't feel one bit sorry for him. Um, I feel sorry for his children. Yeah. I really do. 
Yeah. Um, I'm sure they're crushed. Yeah. But no, I don't feel sorry for him. Mm -mm. It's kind of like Simon Parks. He talks about how um, every, you know, a lot of the people say, okay, we need to forgive all of these dark, nasty people. And Simon Parks is like, I don't forgive those people who tortured and murdered those babies. He says, I can't do that. So, I mean, I had to pay for my karma. I had to work my karma off that, I, you know, I worked really hard to become yeah. the person I am. Yeah. These are people that refuse to change yeah. that continue to hurt people that are, you know, have hurt people over decades and, uh, yeah. their karma has come yeah. because and, you know, they decided not to change. Yeah. And even if we do forgive them, the karma, like you said, they're still going to have to deal with the karma. So they're still going to have to deal uh, with it on the other side. And I just think that the very, very horrible, horrible ones, that, you know, I would never change. They will either go back to the central sun or they'll find themselves in Guantanamo Bay or something like that. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I forgive people, but that, that doesn't mean I feel sorry that they got caught for what they've been doing for a really long time, you know, ruin the lives of 60 people and more because you know, people didn't come forward. No, I don't feel sorry for, the, for one person that has probably affected a hundred. You know, I don't. I, I'm sorry. I just I, don't. Well, like you said, I wonder how many more and are going to come out. I think this is. It's like that snowball coming down that mountain. Now it's just going to gather up the rest of them as it come on. It rolls down. So it's going to be interesting. And that's why I will. I, that's why I turn on the news. It's like, okay, who's going down today? Yeah, like, today it's Tom Brokaw. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a new one every day. You know, when Matt Lauer went down, I was not a bit surprised. Oh, I wasn't either. Uh -uh. Yeah, I was just like, I knew it, you know. And he, he was on Ellen DeGeneres' show, and she had him dressed up in like a dominatrix outfit and he come out there and you know i was just like what the hell is this crap you know and that's why i'm still on the fence with with ellen DeGeneres. you know she she does good things but i think she does it for ratings and uh, because some of the stuff she just had all she just had all the like commentators uh, news media from like CNN and all these top and it's like it, really Ellen really you know I mean the woman is I think the woman is trying to be another Oprah she's trying to be a gay Oprah Winfrey <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry it's the indigo the empath whatever in me that's seeing right through her I'm sorry <laughs> I don't yeah. know yeah I I uh I was surprised about Kevin Spacey. I liked Kevin Spacey's movies. I was disappointed about that, yeah. but not surprised about Matt Lauer at all. Yeah. You know, I kind of expected that. Yeah. But I, more of that's going to happen. It's apparent that there's a lot of people living a secret lives, you know, that are coming. It's getting exposed. Right. Yeah. Well, like just like that, that uh, killer in California. I mean, Wow, was it 40 years he, he's been on the lam and he lived in a neighborhood and nobody suspected? And he was a cop. He was a yes. former cop. Yes. You know, and, and he I'm, got caught. He got caught because uh, one of his relatives put their uh, DNA in one of those uh, ancestry things. Really? Yeah. And then that's how the police caught him. Wow. They found a, one of his relatives' DNA, and then they narrowed it down, went through the family and said, no, it can't be this person. No, it can't be that person. And then they started following him, waited for him to throw DNA out in public, got it, tested it, and caught him. Wow. Well, I guess that's one good thing for Ancestry.com. I know a lot, a lot of us have been saying, 
don't submit your DNA because they're looking for a certain they're looking for certain strands of DNA and that's why they're pushing it so much for so in that respect I'm glad that it worked out that way wow wow so anyway but you don't even have to submit your own if one of your family members does the test yeah. your DNA is basically in there yeah my sister did it we had no I had no idea I was Jewish and Asian until my sister took the test wow wow you didn't know huh wow see yeah. i'm only i'm only i'm half Finn and half bohemian and the only reason is because my dad's full-blooded bohunk and my mom's 100 percent Finn. so that was back when yeah i was yeah my family always i was always told i was german and irish and i'm not german at all you know wow. so when my sister had that test we found out that's interesting Wow. Wow. So, yeah. Well, I guess uh, we probably talked long enough. <laughs> Here's a good place to wrap it up. And, uh, but yeah, you know, I just think the, the main purpose of this video is for people who are waking up and, you know, some of the things that they're being told, you know, you gotta be careful um, what you're being told because it can cause you more damage than good. And, you know, we're all, we all have different jobs. We all have different things that we're doing here. Um, and, you know, it's okay to feel down. It's okay to have these negative feelings. If you're an empath, is, uh, if you've been doing this for a long time. And uh, uh, so, you know, I guess if the information that you get from somebody makes you feel very bad about yourself, then it's probably not good information. Right. You know, if it doesn't resonate, you just pass up, scroll by, you know, yeah. Yeah. if it doesn't resonate you, with you, it might resonate with someone else, but it might not you because you're not on the same path. Yeah. 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 And we're a society that likes to associate with things. We like to put names, terms, you know, empath, indigo, first waivers, uh, light workers, light warriors. And, you know, we all want to associate with some of the, uh, you know, and, and, you know, and I know the Wiccan people deal with this a lot, you know, they get a lot of wannabes and, and who are just there for all the wrong reasons, you know, they're there for shock effect and they're not there for the right reasons at all. So, uh, and you know, a lot of these, or a lot of these, have been infiltrated, you know, a lot of posers. Remember that old word, poser? There's a lot of posers running around out there. Um, oh, I know. And yeah. and there's a lot of trolls. I mean, yeah. I got a nasty comment on my video yesterday. Uh oh. I just said, thank you for your point of view and your comment. Blessings. Yeah. Just don't yeah. give them your energy. Yeah. Don't, don't give in, let them, you know, bully you just pass it on there's a lot of miserable people right now there's a lot of people going through the dark night of the soul there's a lot of people having their karma you know put in their face and they're going to lash out there's two there's two types of people there's people that when they're hurt hurt people and then there's people when they're hurt just hurt themselves yeah so yeah. there's going to be people that lash out at you yeah. And, you know, you just have to let, let it go and stand, you know, know you're right. But um, it doesn't do any good to argue or get upset because I know you had some nasty comments and you took your video down. Yeah, I did because it just, it really hurt me. <laughs> I know it, it's, it's hard. Um, you build up kind of an immunity to the nastiness. Yeah, and I thought I was doing really good. You know, I really was. You were doing really good. But, you know, the dark doesn't want you to do good. No, no. So, yeah. Sometimes they find the right buttons to push, and it just sends you spiraling, you know. And um, I guess sometimes you just got to take that and use it and transmute it and turn it into something good. And right. I mean, because as there'll be like a hundred good comments and then that one comment <laughs> yeah that's the one that you are gonna focus on and not the other 99 good ones <laughs> for some reason that's what <laughs> i know i know and i just guess it's because we are 
we are who we are and we just can't comprehend people treating each other like that and we know who we are we know why we're here and we're trying to help and do good and when somebody says you're not especially if somebody makes you doubt yourself right that's that's what really gets to me you know so anyways but all right okay <laughs> so all right guys you know just hang in there energies are crazy and wild and we're all doing a lot of work and uh, remember if it gets tough time to go within and really heal yourself um i think it's a continuous battle as long as we're here doing this job i don't think we're I don't think we're ever going to come to the point where we're not ever going to have to heal ourselves. Not while we're here anyways. Don't you No, think? we just get better and faster at it. Yeah. Like yeah. I used to have a month of bad days and maybe one good day. Now I have like a month of good days with one bad day. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah, I'm able to uh, work through it so much faster yes. and so much better. Because then uh, I used to be able to. And manifesting is really coming faster and time is speeding up. I mean, I can't believe how fast these months it is. It is a, it's a sign that we're leaving linear time because everything, you know, everything's collapsing now into one and time is just like disappearing. It's wild. It's just wild. So it is. Everything. We're, it's an exciting time to be alive. We are so lucky to be able to see yeah. these changes and what's going yeah. on. I mean, yeah. how, who, how, I'm lucky that I get to see the, the earth change, you know, after it's been this way for so long. I've been watching uh, Spartacus, you know. Oh, okay. Um, I kind of like, like certain parts in history, like Egyptian yeah. times, you know, um, back in the gladiators i don't know it resonates with me i maybe i was around then i don't know probably but, uh, <laughs> are yeah still are but people treated each other terrible then yeah. too you know yeah so this has been going on a, a long, long time, time and we get to see it come to an end and that's yeah. very exciting yeah 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 well, and we actually get to participate and do our small little part you know yeah. And I think many of us have done this before. I think many of us, this is what we do. We go from planet to planet and help this happen. And, um, and I think this is, I think it's happened. I feel like what we're going through now has happened more than once. So do I. I feel that yeah. way too. Yeah. 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 I feel yeah. like I've done this before. Yeah. I've done this before. And I, yes. Yes. And it, it's kind of like we keep going back for the rest of them. It, you know, it's like we, it's like jumping into the fire when the house is burning, you take them out and then you, you oh, there's some more. You go in, you get them all out. Oh, there's some more. And it's weird. It's just weird. So, I don't know. But anyway. Okay, my dear, I guess we, we should end this one. And, um, I was glad that you joined me. It's so much fun. And I'm glad you feel better. I, me too. I'm glad you do we, too. <laughs> I would, last week was so rough, you know, I, and we're, we're used to this. So imagine how it is for people that aren't used to it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? oh, for sure. Yeah. And you know, I'm surprised every time it comes and I shouldn't be. I know it's like, what this not? has happened to you so many times. Why does it seem so like it's a surprise? I think yeah. it's because like things were so calm for so long for this to start up again. It, I thought I was done with this, you know? Yeah. 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 So I don't know. All right. Well, we'll just hang 10 baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how old you are, but that's, 46. you're 46. I'm 10. I got 11 years on you. So, you look great. <laughs> well, thanks. <laughs> but Hang 10 was big in the 70s, a poster with a kitty hanging on a brand. Oh, yes, I remember that. The kitty yeah. hanging. Yeah. 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 So, all right. Okay. Well, we'll be talking to you soon. See okay. Soon. Hang in there. All right.